Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Armazon Pro and Pride Seeds. Joining us here on Real Agriculture this afternoon, we're pleased to have Brunel Sabrin with Antera Agronomy. And Brunel, we're standing in the middle of a, a cornfield here just outside of St. Jean, Manitoba. And can you fill us in on uh, on what we're looking at in uh, in the field right in front of you here? Uh, right in front of me here, we're looking at an emergence, a bit of an emergence trial. So just something we're looking to assess kind of days to emergence, the uniformity of emergence and plant spacing, which is very important in corn and realizing a full yield potential. So, And so you've stuck popsicle sticks in the ground with a number on them. That's how many days it took for that, that plant to emerge? Yeah, exactly. So in this particular plot here, well, as soon as the corn started emerging, we were putting in flags and pop. We ran out of flags, so we used popsicle sticks, but basically identifying corn every day as it emerged. So most of the corn here has emerged over a span of about five days, which isn't too, too bad, but we had a lot of challenges this spring, um, maybe not so much on this field, but in a lot of fields as producers tried getting fields into shape and um, into a condition where they could plant. It's something that uh, in my 25 years we've never seen before. So what were some of those big lessons that we learned putting corn in the ground this year? Well, it started last fall. So last fall and the last week of September, we had about 15 inches of rain out here, which made a challenge getting soybeans. All we had left in the field were soybeans and corn but it made a big challenge getting the crops off the field and getting a lot of field work done. Up until that point, we had been very dry. So even a lot of cereals and canola fields, we had re been reluctant to work at that point. So we went from too dry and guys were worried about working their fields and having them blow to way too wet. And that's how the fields froze. So in our business, we do a lot of soil sampling and we couldn't even drive on the fields until it froze hard enough that we could, it could carry the trucks. So we went into winter with the top six inches being very, very wet. And in our heavy clay soils, our water doesn't move through the soil profile very fast. So it made for big challenges this spring. So the fields, like especially corn fields that hadn't been worked, there was such an insulating mat on top of residue that it took forever to try and dry out those fields. Typically in the valley here, if we can run a heavy harrow through it in the spring, you know, often we can seed that afternoon or at least a couple of days later. But this week it took repeated passes, or this year it took repeated passes with multiple uh, a variety of tillage tools to try to get the fields into shape to bury some of the ruts that we made last fall and just to get them to dry out so that we can plant in them and so then when we did get the crop in the ground we saw some of the i guess ramifications or consequences from how we treated the soil before that yeah we sure did um all a lot of our soils here are clay to heavy clay soils so they're not very forgiving if we start working them in the spring uh, what happens is they're they have a big propensity to shrink and swell. And because they hold a lot of water, they act like a sponge. But as soon as you start working that stuff wet, you're squeezing all of the air pour out of the, the pores and you're making a really compacted, really fine, like it, it turns into cement. I have some great videos showing sidewall compaction in corn where it's like hitting it with a hammer and it's like hitting a brick. It's just cement. So it makes for big issues when the corn germinates and then decides to, tr or is trying to penetrate that dryness and, and throw some roots. So if we can get a rain right after seeding, it erases a lot of our sins. But this year we just didn't, we didn't have a rain up until about three weeks after seeding. So what was happening in a lot of these fields, similar to this one, because our, we were, our soils were worked wet, squeezed all the air out of them. And now as they dry, they shrink while the furrows were starting to open up and becoming really hard. So we had issues where corn seed was germinating, but then drying up or corn seed, you sometimes will see the, the roots follow the furrow trying to penetrate the bottom of it. And so it's, it's really made for a challenging emergence. Now, in this particular trial, everything came up within four or five days, which isn't bad, but we are seeing differences between uh, what they call pinch rows, where there would have been a tractor or an implement tire running along the seed row versus areas that didn't have. Um, because it was on the drier side where we hadn't had a rain, we actually got better emergence where we had a little bit more compaction. But it'll be interesting to carry this through the harvest just to see how the the affects corn cob size. Yeah, we, we don't know the end result, of course, yet when it comes to yield and, and how the plant progresses. But what you're saying here is is 
the rows you've marked off rows here where one of these rows has had tracks on both sides tractor track and a planter tire on both sides and then another row has only had a tire pass on one side and that row actually had the best timing or the quickest emergence yeah it seemed to have the quickest emergence all within about three days where we had 80 or 90 percent emergence whereas some of the rows that didn't have compaction or didn't have that added seed to soil contact we ended up with um it took at least four days to get to 90 percent emergence so timing was one of the the factors that you've looked at here brunel you've also looked at planter performance and, and deviation in terms of skips and and how consistent the the corn is coming up here yeah when we talk about timing of emergence we want the most uniform emergence that we can get uh, some of the rules of thumbs in the industry is if um, a corn plant is one leaf collar or one leaf behind you know, you can expect about 50% of your yield out of that plant. And if it's more than, or one or two or more collars behind, then it's almost considered a weed where it's competing with other plants for nutrients. You might end up with a cob, but it's gonna be a very small cob and it's just basically gonna be robbing from other plants beside it. When we're looking at plant spacing, we want to get the spacing as uniform as possible. Now there's um, a rule of thumb when it comes to plant spacing is anything more than two inches standard deviation between your corn plants will result in a four bushel yield loss. So what I mean by standard deviation, if all your plants were spaced equally seven, seven, seven you know, inches, you would have a standard deviation of zero. If you had, um, it would be six and eight, six and eight, six and eight, six and eight, you'd have a standard deviation of one. 5 and 9, 5 and 9, 5 and 9, you'd have a standard deviation of 2. So anything above 2, every inch above 2, they say, is about a 4 bushel yield loss. So on some of these rows here, now if I recall, uh, some of the rows, even though the compact or the pinch rows that had compaction that came up faster, they were where we had the tire tracks on both sides of the row. I don't know if we were kicking up a little bit of mud or it was, we had a little bit worse deviation. We had a standard deviation there of about four. So we can say an eight or 10% bushel or a yield decrease. Whereas compared to where we didn't have compaction there, we had a standard deviation of about two, two and a half, which is right in the ballpark of where we want to be for most equipment these days. So again, it'll be interesting to, we've numbered all of the the cobs we've counted them we've looked at standard deviation so we'll come back at harvest time and harvest these cobs just to start comparing cob size does it you know where where do we get more correlation to the to yield is it from the emergence or from the the plant spacing so it'll be interesting to see so how how do you recommend growers handle this going forward if we see this such sort of situation again a wet spring where we're uh, putting corn into the ground and, and not necessarily being able to count on having rain right after. Is there a different type of treatment or different equipment approach to take with this? A lot of newer equipment, I think, that has more capabilities of managing your downforce on your planter and really placing that seed properly into moisture, uh, slowing down, really paying attention, trying not to work the fields wet. I hear we were in a case where farmers were panicking a little bit, working against the calendar because we only have so many days to grow corn. So it's trying to get the fields in the shape so that we can at least seed them. And well, it's, it's a gamble that we take, you know, is it gonna rain, is it not gonna rain? It'll vary field by field. Generally, we try to work all of our residue in in the fall just to give it a bit of a black layer. Um, we still want some level of residue to give us what they call soil armor because that leads to a second problem. Because we worked our, overworked our fields this spring trying to get them into shape, it left the soil surface really black so when we did finally get rain last week, we had two inches of rain that when it hits that soil surface, they were big heavy droplets. It pulverizes that surface and it creates, it seals it off and creates a, a bit of a crust. So yeah, we got the rain to germinate a lot of the crops, but now the crops are having to fight through the crust to get, to get out. So. so right now we'd be better off having a little bit more root material in the soil. Yeah, more root material or more, you want some level of residue on the surface and even having the residue worked into the top couple of inches helps that rain penetrate versus having it seal off right away. So so if we could do the spring of 2020 again, would you do it differently? Well, we definitely would have been more aggressive or tried to be more aggressive with getting fields into shape last fall. I think 
knowing what we know now, more guys too wouldn't have been in a panic, as much of a panic last fall to get the crop off and to create all of these ruts and problems. So it's, we're always learning. Yeah. Finally then, Brunel, are you seeing anything in terms of nutrient uptake or, or different uh, symptoms in, in the corn here when it comes to how, uh, how much of a struggle it's been coming out of that furrow, that compacted furrow? Uh, not yet, no. It's difficult to attribute right now because we've had really bad wind damage. We've had uh, really cooler weather, which I think is causing a lot of the corn yellowing. If we could get a couple of days of sun and some heat, I think it would perk it up quite a bit. Um, I guess that's another thing that compounded this spring is it was such a cold start to the spring that things, things didn't want to thaw and draw out. We still had frost coming out of the ground later than we normally would. All right. Well, thanks for your time and thanks for uh, showing us your emergence plot here, Bruno. For sure. Thank you.